425 million in the whole world in 2017. Approximately 95% of all cases of, cases of diabetes uh, get categorized into type 2 that shows a symptom of insulin resistance and the relative deficiency. In order to prevent type 2 diabetes, it is important to control the postprandial blood glucose level by an appropriate food intake. Then, how can we control the postprandial blood glucose level? When we take starch, it is partially hydrolyzed by alpha amylase in saliva and hydrolysate is conveyed to the small intestine via stomach. Then, it is further hydrolyzed to glucose by alpha amylase and mortase in the small intestine. Increasing peptide hormones such as glucagon like peptide 1, GMP1, and glucose dependent insulinotropic polypeptide GIP are secreted from intestinal mucosal cells in response to in response to nutrient ingestion and urge insulin to be reduced from pancreas to blood. Then insulin promotes the uptake of glucose into tissues, such as skeletal muscle and adipose tissue, which leads to the reduction in blood glucose level. Meanwhile, diabetes 4 DPP4 inactivates inactivates function by cleaving it, which reduces ins insulin secretion. Therefore, in order to suppress the elevation in blood glucose level, inhibition of digestive enzymes such as alphomylase and mortis, prevention of glucose absorption from the small intestine, Inhibition of DPP4 activity to keep secreting insulin and promotion of insulin secretion would be effective. However, too much secretion of insulin might cause hypoglycemia, which might be sometimes dangerous. To prevent life-related diseases such as diabetes mellitus, dyslipidemia, hypertension, and osteoporosis, and keep good health by an appropriate food intake, Japanese government established a regulation that allowed health claim of food products in 1991. Since then, the functional foods approved to claim a health benefit by the Consumer Affairs Agency, formerly the Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare in Japan, have been produced as foshu, foods for specified health uses. As of April 28th this year, 1,073 items have been approved to claim their health benefit as foshu. At the moment, foshu products are categorized into 10 according to their functions. Modulation of blood sugar level is one of them. There are about 150 foshu products to modulate blood glucose level, but the effective components in them are only polymerase tannin, neocotaranol, indigestible dextrin, L-arabinose, and wheat albumin. Interestingly, these are quite different types of substances. I mean, polyphenol, dietary fiber, monosaccharide, and protein. But their functions are quite similar. Polymerase tannin from gravel leaves and neocadalanol from slicea inhibit alpha amylase, mortis, and sucrase. Therefore, they can suppress the increase in blood glucose level when starch-based and sugar-based foods are taken, but they cannot work on foods that contain glucose and fructose. This is a picture of the bottles of, bottles of tea made from gravel leaves and the box of powder made from slicea extract. Indigestible dextrin inhibits the transportation route of monosaccharides produced from mortis and sucrase. It can also suppress the increase in blood glucose level when starch-based and sugar-based foods are taken, but cannot work on foods that contain glucose and fructose.
These are the packages of miso soup and buckwheat noodle that contain indigestible dextrin. l arabinose only inhibits sucrase, and it cannot suppress the elevation and blood glucose level when starch-based food and food that contain glucose and fructose are taken. This is the package of sweetener that contains l arabinose Wheat albumin inhibits alpha amylase and it can only suppress the elevation in blood glucose level when starch-based food is taken. This is the package of soup that contains wheat albumin. So, since there are not so many varieties of defective substances, and no substance can suppress the increase in blood glucose level when glucose or fructose is taken. Therefore, it would be beneficial to find some other effective substances in order to provide us with a wider development of functional foods. Therefore, we ex examined if albumin from other cereals, such as buckwheat and rice, have the similar effect of wheat albumin. First, we extracted crude albumin from wheat, buckwheat and rice and compared the inhibitory activity against alpha amylase. As shown here, wheat albumin inhibited the activity of alpha amylase from human saliva, porcine pancreas, and mealworm. Buckwheat albumin inhibited the activity of alpha amylase from porcine pancreas and mealworm, but did not inhibit that from human saliva. Contrary to our expectation, Rice albumin inhibited the activity of alpha amylase from mealworm only. So you would think that rice albumin is hopeless to prevent hyperglycemia. I thought the same as well, but we continued some more experiments before giving it up. Then, we measured the digestibility of cereal albumin by using pepsin and pancreatin. As a result, Wheat and rice albumin were found to have strong resistance against digestion by pepsin and pancreatin. They were not hydrolyzed even after the attack by pepsin for 2 hours and further by pancreatin for 6 hours. On the other hand, buckwheat albumin was mostly hydrolyzed after the attack by pancreatin. Therefore, I thought it might be possible to suppress the elevation in blood glucose level even by rice albumin because large molecules may absorb monosaccharides and inhibit the absorption from the smaller intestine. This slide shows the inhibitory activity of cereal albumin hydrolysates. Beyond our expectation, wheat albumin that had a strong resistance against digestibility reduced its activity when digested by pancreatin. The reason for this might be because some of the alpha amylase inhibitor in wheat albumin might have been hydrolyzed by pancreatin and lost its inhibitory activity. On the contrary, buckwheat albumin that was hydrolyzed by digestive enzymes retained higher inhibitory activity against alpha amylase. This result indicates that some small peptides in buckwheat albumin have a function to inhibit alpha amylase activity. Then, in vivo study was conducted to examine the preventive effect of cereal albumin on the increase in blood glucose level. First, we examined the effect of wheat and buckwheat albumin on postprandial hyperglycemia when starch was administered. Wheat or buckwheat albumin was administered to rats together with starch, and the blood was collected from the tail vein up to 90 minutes after the administration. Then, blood glucose in and insulin levels were measured. This figure shows the time course of blood glucose level after the oral administration of starch together with wheat and buckwheat albumin. The administration of wheat or buckwheat albumin suppressed the increase in blood glucose level 15 minutes after the ingestion of starch. This figure shows the time course of blood insulin level 
after the oral administration of starch together with weed or buckwheat albumin. The administration of weed or buckwheat albumin suppresses the increase in blood insulin level 15 minutes after the ingestion of starch as well. Then, glucose loading test was conducted using wheat and buckwheat albumin. Glucose was administered to rats instead of starch together with wheat and buckwheat albumin, and the blood was collected from the tail vein up to 90 minutes after the administration. Then blood glucose and the insulin levels were measured. This figure shows the time course of blood glucose level after the oral administration of glucose together with wheat or buckwheat albumin. The administration of wheat or buckwheat albumin did not have any effect on blood glucose level. This figure shows the time course of blood insulin level after the oral administration of glucose together with wheat or buckwheat albumin. The administration of wheat or buckwheat albumin did not have any effect on blood insulin level either. Therefore, wheat albumin has the suppressive effect against hyperglycemia by inhibiting alpha amylase in saliva and pancreas, which indicates that it is effective only when starch-based food is taken. Similarly, buckwheat albumin has the suppressive effect against hyperglycemia by inhibiting alpha amylase in pancreas. Then, the preventive effect of rice albumin on the increase in blood glucose level was examined. Rice albumin was administered to rats together with starch, and the blood was collected from the tail vein up to 90 minutes after the administration. Then, the blood glucose and the insulin levels were measured. The left figure shows the time course of blood glucose level after the oral administration of starch, and the right figure shows the area under the curve. As you can see, the administration of rice albumin suppressed the increase in blood glucose level after the ingestion of starch. The area under the curve of rice albumin group was almost half that of control group. These are the results of plasma insulin level after the oral administration of starch. Similar to the result of blood glucose level, the administration of rice albumin lowered the increase in plasma insulin level after the ingestion of starch. As rice albumin did not inhibit the activity of alpha amylase from mammarian, its effect on suppressing blood glucose level was assumed to be different from that of wheat and buckwheat albumin. If it binds to glucose in the small intestine and inhibits its absorption, the increase in blood glucose level will be suppressed even after the loading of glucose. Therefore, glucose was administered to rats instead of starch, and we examined if rice albumin could suppress the elevation in blood glucose level. The amount of rice albumin was buried this time. Blood was collected from the tail vein up to 90 minutes after the oral administration of rice albumin together with glucose and the blood glucose and insulin levels were measured. The administration of rice albumin suppressed the increase in blood glucose level in dose-dependent manner even after glucose loading. The area under the curve of rice albumin group decreased as the amount of rice albumin increased. These are the results of plasma insulin level after the oral administration of glucose. Similar to the result of blood glucose level, the administration of rice albumin suppressed the increase in insulin level. The area under the curve of rice albumin group also decreased as the increase in the amount of rice albumin. In order to examine if rice albumin RA works in the gut by preventing glucose absorption from the small intestine or in the blood by promoting insulin secretion, we conducted intraproteinuria glucose tolerance test, IPGTT. In this IPGTT, 
after RA was already administered to rats, glucose was intraproteinally ingested into the abdominal cavity to have glucose into the blood without being absorbed from the small intestine. Therefore, if the blood glucose level increases even with the oral administration of RA, it indicates that RA works in the gut by preventing glucose absorption from the small intestine. This is the experimental design for IBGTT. 15 minutes after the oral administration of rice albumin RA, glucose was intraproteinally ingested. Then, blood was collected from the tail vein up to 90 minutes after the administration and blood glucose and insulin levels were measured. As you can see, even with the oral administration of RA, blood glucose level increased in the same level as that of control group, indicating that RA works in the gut and not in the blood. Similar to the result of blood glucose level, the oral administration of RA did not suppress the increase in insulin level in IBGTT. Therefore, although rhizolibumin RA does not inhibit the activity of digestive enzymes, it prevents hyperglycemia probably by preventing glucose absorption from the small intestine. This is the same as this page of rhizolibumin that I have shown before. We have already confirmed by LC Nano MSMS that this band of 14 kilodotin is the peptide produced from RA of 16 kilodotin. In other words, RA of 16 kilodotin is hydrolyzed to 14 kilodotin of high molecular peptide HMP and low molecular peptide LMP of less than 2 kilodotin. Therefore, we fractionated HMP and LMP by gel filtration chromatography after the hydrolysis of RA by trypsin and examined which peptides are responsible for prevention of hyperglycemia. After fractionation, HMP and LMP were already administered to rats together with glucose and the suppressive effect of hyperglycemia was examined. Interestingly enough, both HMP and LMP suppress the elevation in blood glucose level to the same level as RA. Although there was no significant difference, both HMP and LMP suppress the elevation in insulin level as well. The possible mechanism of HMP in preventing glucose absorption from the small intestine would be adsorbing glucose onto its molecule and promote its excretion like dietary fibers. On the other hand, LMP may suppress the expression of glucose transporter as GLUT1 by binding to sweet taste receptor T1R2 and T1R3. Therefore, glucose binding capacity of HMP was measured in vitro by using semi-permeable membrane. As controlled dietary fibers, Guanacam and carboxymethylcellulose CMC were used. First, HMP, RA, guacam, and CMC were dissolved in the glucose solution and placed on the upper part of the semi-permeable membrane. Then, glucose concentration in the lower chamber was measured up to 150 minutes. This slide shows the time course of glucose concentration in the lower chamber. HMP showed the glucose binding capacity to the same level as RA and CMC, though its glucose binding capacity was not so high as guacam. Therefore, the suppressive effect of HMP on postprandial hyperglycemia would be partially attributed to its glucose binding capacity. Then, we examined the effect of LMP on SGLUT1 expression by using STC1 cells. After culturing ST1 cells to be 70% conferent, the median was replaced with the one containing LMP in 25 millimolar glucose. As a negative controlled, 
the medium containing 3 millimolar glucose was used. And as a positive control, the medium containing 25 millimolar glucose was used. After proteins were extracted from the cartridge cells, Western blotting for SD1 cells were conducted. This slide shows the result of Western blotting. LMP significantly suppressed the expression of S group 1 almost to the same level as that of cells cultured with 3 millimolar glucose. Therefore, the mechanism of LMP in preventing glucose absorption from the smaller intestine may be attributed to the suppression of s glut one expression by binding sweet taste receptor T1R2 and T1R3. This table summarizes the properties of theory of albumins. Finally, please allow me to introduce an international conference in Japan. International Congress of Nutrition ASEAN 2021 will be held in Tokyo in September next year. If you are interested in attending this conference, please visit the homepage of ASEAN 2021. Thank you very much.